Hey everyone, and welcome to week three of our series, Give Big. So before we get into anything for today, let's do a quick recap of the past two weeks just to catch you up to speed. So week one, we, well, we opened this whole thing of what being generous means, and we saw how generous God was to us by giving us his only son, which meant getting the biggest gift of eternal life. And because he was generous to us, we are now called as children of God to live generous lives. Then in week two, we learned that being generous is sharing what we have, it's sharing with other people, with what we've been blessed with, we get to bless other people. And also that being generous and in sharing, we do it in a big way, we give big. We don't just give the old stuff that we don't want or you know our leftover scraps, but we give the good stuff because that's being generous. And we learned about the little boy who gave his lunch and how God used his lunch to feed 5,000 people. Now, this week, we're looking at a story found in Mark chapter 12. And this story is all about the attitude of our hearts when we give. You see, God's not so worried about what we give, how much we give, but he is concerned about what our hearts look like when we give. And so we'll get into that a little bit later. But for now, let's all stand to our feet and let's start this morning off with a time of praise and worship. Thank you for the sun that shines. Thank you for your light that guides. Thank you for the lamp onto my feet. Thank you for our daily bread. Thank you for our great high priest. Thank you for the one who came to save. He says, we pray. We are the body of Christ. We 
are His hands and feet shining His light. We are the church, we are the body of Christ. We're called to His mission and we're not missing out. Listen up, we are the church. It's not a building or a place we meet. It's what we carry in our hearts. It's all who believe in Jesus Christ. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. We are the church, we are the body of Christ. We are his hands and feet shining his light. We are the church, we are the body of Christ. We're called to his mission and we're not missing out. We are the church, gotta play our part, and be what we are, we stick together, side by side, We're always ready, the bride of Christ. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. We are the body of Christ We are His hands and feet shining His light We are the church, we are the body of Christ We're called to His mission and we're not missing out We are the church We are the church We are the church Ephesians 5 verse 25 We are the church We are the church we are the church, Ephesians 5 verse 25, we are the church, we are the church, we are the church, Ephesians 5 verse 25, we are the church, we are the church, we are the church, Ephesians 5 verse So guys, this week's bottom line is this. It's what's on the inside that counts. Now, that basically means is God is looking at our hearts. And he's not looking at what we sometimes do outside. Because the thing that's really cool about God is God looks at our hearts. More importantly, he looks at the attitude of our hearts. And when we put this into context of us being generous, we want to give to please God, but we need to make sure that our hearts are in a good place. And there's two places we can fall into, is we can either fall into a place of giving because we want to make God happy and we know that it's right, or because it is necessary and we're doing it to please the people around us. Now you see, sometimes we can do things or give things or share things and we might try to do something a little bit extra in order to make God happy. For instance, we might want to dance and sing to show that our hearts are happy. Or we might want to throw confetti to show that our hearts are happy. might you know start laughing out loud every time we want to make God happy now these things are all very very interesting ways of thinking about it but let's look at what the Bible says and let's take a look at this bible story and see what it has to say our story today is about a widow now a widow is someone whose husband had died and so this would mean that she lived all alone 
The widow in our story didn't have very much money at all. In fact, she was very poor. But she loved the Lord with all her heart, and she was someone who would be called a cheerful giver. Let's see why. One day Jesus was sitting in the temple near the collection box. The collection box was where people would come put their money offerings. As Jesus sat there, they saw many people come drop their money in. Many rich people came who put large amounts of money, but Jesus wasn't impressed by them. The person who stood out to Jesus the most was the poor widow who came and dropped in two coins. Jesus said to his disciples, You see this poor widow? She has given more than all the others who came to put their money in. The disciples looked confused. These rich people gave a lot of money, and this woman only gave two small coins? Jesus explained to them that even though this woman was poor, she gave all she had. The rich people only gave away a small amount of what they had. This woman had no other money, no money for clothes or even food, but she gave all she had and trusted that God would take care of her. It was easy for the rich people to put a lot of money in as they had so much anyways. But for this woman, she gave up a lot to be able to give. Jesus continued explaining all this to his disciples. You see, these rich people gave because they wanted to look good to others. But on the inside, they were prideful and selfish. They wanted people to look at them and say, Wow, look how much they gave. Whereas the poor widow gave from a pure heart, she didn't give to look good to anyone. She gave because she truly loved God and wanted to please Him. On the outside, her offering might have looked small and worthless. But on the inside, she had a beautiful heart that trusted the Lord with all that she had. And this was worth far more than all the money all the rich people had put in the collection box altogether. So the question is, could you have done something like what that widow did? I mean, that widow gave all she had. Would you be able to give all that you had knowing that you had nothing else? So, I mean, if I had to imagine it, it couldn't have been easy for the widow to give all that she had. But you see what this act that she did shows God is that she loved God and she trusted him. And so when she gave, she gave with a cheerful heart, a heart that wanted to please her God, not a heart of like, oh, I really trust God. What am I? There was a cheerfulness in her heart when she gave. So I'm gonna read a scripture found in 1 Samuel 16 verse seven, and it says this. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. You see guys, in our story, we see how these rich men, they might have looked like they gave more, but in actual fact, the only reason they were giving was to make themselves look good. So the attitude of their hearts would have been pretty gross actually, and God wouldn't have been too impressed by that at all. But the woman who would have appeared to have given very little, actually gave the most because she gave all that she had and her heart was to show God that she loved and she trusted him and so in actual fact in the story the woman although it looked outwardly that she gave less she actually gave way more than all those rich people put together well I have got a very cool object lesson for you, so check this out. What's up everybody? I hope you guys have had an awesome morning so far. I know I really enjoyed it. I don't know about you, Chunky. Yeah, it's been a lot of It's been great. He kind of looks a bit half asleep, but it's okay. I'll be awake for the both of us. We move. So this morning we have been learning about being generous and the fact that it's actually what's on the inside that really um, counts. You know what, speaking about that, uh, is there any chance I could get some money? Um, I just need some money. Yeah, sure, no problem, I, I have, I have this money. Yeah. So do you want it? Um, well, that's actually not exactly what I had in mind. No, but come on, it's, it's 500, I mean, like, look at this, it's like 500, like rands of like monopoly money like that's a lot and you, you've got a lot here so it must be like thousands and thousands of rand i'm sure you want it don't you um no, no not really um but why not it's it's monopoly money it's like lots of money well i think it would be good if i was buying like durban harbor in monopoly <laughs> that's true you know why chunky because this isn't actual real money it's only fake money in monopoly okay i'm sorry chunky that's true but you can have that if you want so here here are some some real money here we go you're welcome to you're welcome to take yes it. this is what i'm looking for a nice nelson mandela mm -hmm. 50 rand south african approved See everything on the front dollar, right this there. is That's this what I want. you know what you could do with the chunky you could buy a pizza oh 
and you could you could even maybe go to the movies oh and, and sweets so <gasps> many sweets think about the sweets just think about them like all those like jelly beans and like yeah that's true wait wait chunky wait have you seen this, Chunky? Uh, I've smelt it all right. It doesn't smell quite do you, right, I'll be honest. Do you just smell it again? Smells does, a bit like papery, or but like like fake papery. Should we have a look and see if it's real? Should we like hold it up to the light? You know, Chunky, I don't think this is real money. I don't. <laughs> this is not real money. Oh. oh my goodness, Chunky! How do we not know that? You know, I think it was only when we held it up. To the light when we could see through it that we actually realized that it was fake money do you know i learned something really interesting the other day do you know how you can tell if money is real or not no you actually hold it up to that wait i'll show you i think this is real money no right? no you've told me that before i think it is okay so let's let's do a test if we hold it up to the light like that can you see that inside it you can see something, it's like a picture. Wow. It's called a watermark and it's actually inside the paper. And if you have a look at this awesome little ribbon that comes down here, it actually goes inside of the paper. How cool. And that's how we know that money is real is because we can see inside of it. And that's actually our object lesson today. Right, so before I give this to you, do you mind if I, I keep this for a little second? Yeah, no, oh, oh, thank you, thank you. So that's actually our object lesson today. We're learning about the fact that it's what's on the inside that counts. And so, I mean, when we're playing Monopoly, we can feel really rich with this stuff. But it's not actually real and it doesn't count for anything. You can't go and buy yourself a package of sweets or something. Um, and so, even when we have money that looks real, if it doesn't have what's on the inside that really counts, then it doesn't really count for much. And just like that, sometimes we can be generous and we can sort of be like monopoly money or fake money and we can be generous just so that other people see it and that we look good. But what actually is what we need to do is we need to be pleasing God and being generous so that it's actually on the inside, so that God sees what's on the inside that counts and not just what people are seeing. So we need to be pleasing God and not being generous to look good because it's actually what's on the inside, just like this money that counts. You, you, you can have this if you want. We're rich. <laughs> Are you ready for our memory verse today? So it's week three, it should be stuck in your head by now. But if it's not, I, actually, let's play a game. I think we should play some Pictionary. So I'm gonna give you a clue about what the memory verse is. So I'm gonna put some pictures up on the screen, but I'll, I'll draw them here so they'll appear here. And um, hopefully this will help remind you of what the memory verse is. Okay, so, hmm, let me think about what I should draw. Okay. There you go. Get that one. Yeah, it's a pretty good picture. I know, I'm quite an artist. Um, for this word, what can I draw? Okay, I'll draw this. This is a little bit harder. There you go. Okay, did you like that one? Did you like that one? Okay. Um, and then this one, oh, I know what I can draw. I know, I'll just draw, look at, are you? Yeah, okay, sorry, I had to, just, there you go. Okay, what do you think it is? Did you get it? Yes, no, maybe? Ah, uh, okay, well, let's recap together. So it comes out of Matthew 10, verse eight, which says, give as freely as you have received. So nicely done, guys. Why don't we all stand to our feet and get ready for our memory first dance and song. Woo, woo, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give big, give big, whatever it takes. No holding back, give it away. It's more blessed to give and receive. Give as freely as you have received. Give big, give big, whatever it takes No holding back, give it away It's more blessed To give and receive, give as freely As you have received Whoa, Matthew 10 verse 8 He's lavished us with His goodness He's given us all we need He's shown us what giving is When He hung on the cross and gave it all He's lavished us with His goodness He's given us all we need He's shown us what giving is When He hung on the cross and gave it all Give big, give 
big whatever it takes No holding back, give it away It's more blessed To give and receive, give as freely As you have received Give big, give big whatever it takes No holding back, give it away It's more blessed To give and receive, give as freely As you have received Oh, Matthew 10 verse 8 Press down, shaking together, running over and pouring out What we give will be given back Way more than ever before Press down, shaking together, running over and pouring out What we give will be given back Way more than ever before Give big, give big, whatever it takes no holding back, give it away, it's more blessed To give and receive, give as freely As you have received, give big, give big, whatever it takes No holding back, give it away, it's more blessed To give and receive, give as freely As you have received, whoa Matthew 10 verse 8 Whoa, Matthew 10 verse 8 The crazy thing about this week is God is really, really interested in the heart. And more importantly, He's interested in the attitude we have when we give and share our things. You see, often when we give, we can give from a place of love and saying, this is what I want to give away because God gave it to me and I want to give it and I want to bless people. But the other attitude we can have is that we are, are giving in order to please other people and because we don't want to look bad and because somebody told us to do it. Now, the thing about this is that God is so incredible that He can look directly into our hearts. That's not saying that when you do give away and you, you sometimes aren't happy about it, that it's not a good thing. But it just means we need to change our hearts a little bit and get them into the right place. So I'm going to pray for us now. And if that's you sometimes, and sometimes you, you're battling to, to share, battling to give away things, I'm going to pray that the Lord would come and help us with our hearts, that He would come and help change our hearts when it comes to sharing, that we may have a heart like His. Dear Lord Father, I just thank you so much for who you are, Lord God. I just pray that you would come and give us the right heart, Lord God. That when we share our things, that when we give away some of our things, Lord God, when we give away the things that you have blessed us with, Lord God, that we would have the right attitude in our hearts, Lord God. I just pray that when we do this, Lord God, that we have a, uh, have a smile and a joy that is straight from you, Lord God. That you would come and be our example. I pray this right now in your name. And everyone said, Amen. So today I want to ask you guys a very important question. Have you put your faith in Jesus? Have you declared with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in your heart that God raised him from the dead? That means putting our faith in Jesus. It means saying, Jesus, I choose to give my life to you. I choose to follow you and to live for you every single day. If you've never done that, I want to pray a really simple prayer with you, which is accepting Jesus into your heart to make you a brand new person, a child of God. So if that's you, you want to pray that prayer, all I want you to do is close your eyes and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. And so I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross to forgive my sins so that I can be free. Today I choose to follow you. Come live in my heart. Make me a brand new person, a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, if you prayed that prayer for the first time today, make sure you tell someone about it. It can be a leader at church or a parent or an older sibling, but it's super important that you have someone to walk out this Christian journey with you. Jesus
Jesus. I give you my heart, I give you my life, I give you all of me. Jesus, I give you my song, I give you my voice, I give you all of me. Jesus, you are the greatest, you're mighty and you're strong. I lift my hands in worship and sing of who you are. No other name is higher, no other name is true. We lift our voice and sing it out. God, we look to you. Jesus, Jesus, the name that has power. Jesus, Jesus, the name. today so bottom line it's what's on the inside that counts remember God is more concerned about the attitude of our hearts rather than what we give or how much we give and we looked at a story found in Mark chapter 12 where we saw a widow give all she had as her offering whereas there were some rich people who came and gave a whole lot of money but it was really to make themselves look good and so in the story we see how the widow in fact gave a lot more and what she gave was given with a cheerful heart and it pleased God. Now, week four coming up next week, we're gonna continue looking at this whole thing of generosity, so make sure that you are here. But for today, remember, it's the attitude of our hearts that counts. It's what's on the inside that matters most to God. So this Sunday Fun Day Challenge is gonna require some strength, some flexibility and now Sam, so are you ready? I need you to get into a group of three. So you need three people per team to be able to do this challenge. And I need you maybe try and find someone similar in your heart, you know, that type of thing. Um, so the aim is to make a pyramid something like this. Do you think you can do it? All the best, let me know. 